Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. If you please, please repeat after me, do our confession of faith. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. Today I'm about to receive. Today I'm about to receive. Incorruptible. Incorruptible. Indestructible. Indestructible. Ever living. Ever living. See. See. Of the Word of God. Of the Word of God. I boldly proclaim. I boldly proclaim. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Today I just wanted to provide a few short words based off of our series of faith, foolishness, and presumption. We dealt with the other two parts, but I think this last part is apropos. It's apropos because we've uh, dealt with faith. And it's really good now, not just now, but really every day. And as we know about, you know, everybody has their own definition of faith. But its simplest definition can be found, as we commonly know, it's in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And I think I have it out of the TB version. I think it's the, the living version Bible. So if you have it, that'd be great. But if you don't, just go ahead and check it out later and have it be like a motivational scripture for you. And then read it in its context as well. So let me pull it out. It says, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that we have hope for is waiting for us. Read that again. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. And really, that's the life of a person who trusts and believes in God. Certain things that we believe God for, especially whenever when life hits you, you see some of the things aren't really critical. Like people want to believe God for a new car or a new dress or a new pair of tennis shoes. Well, is that really in the will of God? Is that How does that profess or move forward the kingdom? Well, let's go for real life things. Like as we discussed earlier, people in our church, their mothers, have needing surgery for esophagus or fighting for their life. Now, we know it's the will of God for people to live and to be healthy because he beloved who wishes above all things that we may prosper and be in health, even as our soul or our mind prospers. And we know that healing is God's will. So that's what we believe in God for. And we have a confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. Now, this is what we call the fight of faith. I believe Paul was talking about how we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So the fight of faith is wrestling. It's a quote unquote a spiritual act. And how we use or how we fight in the spirit is through prayer, fasting, and believing. Prayer, fasting, and believing. I like to use the examples of what people in the old times used to do and in the Bible, but I'll just go with something that's close to our time. I think it's 1900 to 1907. And I think we call it known as the Azusa Street Revival. I think that's the time period. I probably have the dates a little bit wrong. But what they did, there was a man and a woman, a man, two men, if I remember correctly. One was African-American, one was white. And it was during the time of heightened, you know, racial oppression, how it is in our country. And what they decided to do, one is to want to experience the presence of God. And what they did, they worked on shifts. One prayed without ceasing for so many hours. And then the other one went to work. When the other one came back, he started praying. And what they're doing, they're copying what the early church did for Peter whenever he was in prison. They prayed without ceasing, expecting God to do something. And your life as a Christian, your life just living is great expectation. We expect God to do a miracle. We expect him to do the supernatural. And whenever God does the miracle and the supernatural, when it happens, it seems like it's always supposed to be. I don't know how he's going to change, but he will change. And don't you think it's interesting? I like to put this in there too, Chris. Mm -hmm. We're not asking anybody for a special offering because money doesn't move the hand of God. The fervent or effectual prayer of a righteous person makes room for many things. You have to be constant in your prayer. You have to be consistent in your prayer. You have to be 
more tenacious, more tenacious than your enemy. Because whenever there's a sickness or whatever it is, some kind of barrier, most of the time, 9.7 times out of 10, it's not God. It's the enemy. So what will you do? Will you stand back or will you go back and depend upon your faith? That's your sure foundation. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. So what we want has to be in line with the kingdom of heaven and its purposes. Well, Tim, I don't know if what I want is in line with the kingdom. Yes, you do. If you ever want to know what the kingdom's purposes is, and see, here at our church, these are experienced Christians. You guys have been in the faith for a long time. So you guys already know what the purpose of the kingdom of heaven is. But for those who are listeners who do not know about that, I'm focused on, on the book of Matthews. The book of Matthew shows you the purpose. It shows you the will. It shows you the desire of the kingdom. And part of that, what we focus on now today is healing. And we know it's God's will for all of us, for his people to be healed. And we know we can come together in faith with great expectation and knowing that what we want is going to happen. So we look and expect the miracle and not just for our family, but for those who are sick in the ICUs, for those who are sick in our country, for all those families who've lost their family members. I think it's over 100,000, getting close to 200,000 who've lost their families' lives over COVID-19. Those who have lost jobs, I think it's 40 million people who have had jobs are in furlough. All those who are wanting somebody to help. Well, we pray for them. And we ask God to move in our country. We ask God to open up and to create, help these people create businesses. And anybody who has money, who has it locked away, we ask, we ask, we bind Satan's demonic power from holding that back from these workers in the name of Jesus. We ask God to put people who are in power, who have a heart for people, and not just want to steal money and to abuse. That's not God. Because the enemy comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. You can always tell who people are by their fruit. You ain't got to be mad or angry about it. They just show you who they are. And so what we as the church do, we come against that with our weapons. We don't come and shoot people. And it's cool to march. And it's cool to do presentations on different television programs or whatnot. But that's not really what changes things. It's a spiritual battle. The spiritual battle is the heart of the matter. Everything else is window dressings. Yes, protest peacefully. Yes, resist peacefully. But the key thing is the spiritual matter. What will you do against the spirit prince of this nation? What will you do against the spirit prince who focuses on certain diseases and certain groups and certain families? You bind and rebuke that in the name of Jesus and cast it down. As Jesus talked about, I believe it's not, if it's not in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, it's in the book of Luke, and how his disciples, after they were on the mountain, and he saw his glory, and then they came down from the mountain experience, and there was a man who went to Jesus' other nine disciples, asking for assistance and help for his son who was oppressed, and they couldn't do anything. Jesus came down, took care of the matter, and he informed them, these do not come out except through prayer and fasting. Now, some translations don't have fasting, the other ones included in there. What the writer is trying to tell you is you have to consecrate and focus. You have to focus on what you want. What the book of Hebrews chapter 11 tells us, let me open back up again. It says, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. How much do you want this? Are you going to work in shifts to pray? When one gets tired, the other one prays. Why are you doing that? Shift of prayer warriors, as we call them. Others are praising God. Others are worshiping God. Some are just staying consistent and encouraging others. That's the body of Christ. Body of Christ works harmoniously. I like to use an example. There's this one lady. She of uh, her son had autism, severe autism. Not just play autism that we talk about. This is severe autism. And he couldn't speak. He was just like trapped in his body. So what she did, I, I won't bring in her faith. Can I bring in her faith, Chris? Mm -hmm. What she did, she was Catholic. And so what she did, she called the nuns who were overseas, because I think her family was overseas as well. So they prayed. 
She asked her family to pray. She asked another group to pray, and she prayed. And then she acted. See, that's another key. Whenever you're doing things, you have to act. You're not pretending. You're believing that what you've prayed for, you have the results. So you're living on. You're moving. You're not staying stagnant. You have to move. That's what she did. So she brought in, quote, unquote, specialists that she knew about who worked with her child. And it took a little while. It, it didn't change in six months. It didn't change in a year. It took about two or three years. And then her child got out of it. And she gave God the glory. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Because we because we deal with a very bad devil. She had another son. And the same issues that the first one dealt with, he dealt with. And that just about took her under. But what she did, she knew what she wanted to believe in. She got her prayer warriors. She acted. And God delivered both of her children. Now, if God would do that for her, who lived in New York, who had family over in France, he'll do the same for you, and he'll do the same for me. So you have to stay in faith. How do you stay in faith? These are the practicalities of the faith that a lot of our people don't want to talk about because it's not exciting, it's not sexy. How do you stay in faith? Well, I use example of what Hope did for us. There are certain scriptures, healing scriptures, that she put. they had put to uh, music. And it's on YouTube. And they play over and over again. So why are you sleeping you're hearing that? Because remember, your, your spirit is like God. Your spirit never sleeps. It always stays awake. And you listen to that over and over and over again. So you're getting into the mindset of prayer. That's one of your weapons. You wake up. I know Chris, like he was talking about, he's listening to praise and praise and worship. And we listen to, I think it's Reverend Timothy, right? We're listening. You're staying in prayer. You're keeping your spirit. You're keeping your soul, which is your mind, your thoughts, your ideas, on par with heaven. And then you have to do what Jesus did. Remember, he gave you the example of, um, I think it was the widow woman who talked to the unjust king, unjust judge. I think that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And she stayed consistent, bo just bothering, just pestering. That's what you do for God. Now, you can never over-pester God, right? But Jesus gave you that image on purpose so you can know what to do. Just keep on bringing it back to his remembrance, bringing it back. Why do you do that? That's you boldly come before the throne of grace so that you can find some help when you need it. Because there is an accuser of the brethren who goes to the throne of grace on a regular basis asking for permission to oppress you. You need to resist him. How to resist him? Well, I said it earlier. We resist him through prayer, through fasting, through consecration, through keeping our mind and our thoughts correct. And, you know, and doing what we can do, knowing what's ever wrong with us, and then stepping outside of that and praying for others. And in praying for your caregivers. What is faith, class? Faith is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. But what we want has to be in line with the will of God. It has to be in line with his will. And you have to be productive. Remember we talked about that, I forgot how many Sundays it was. When you're not productive to the kingdom of heaven, you go on God's great trash heap. That's what Hades is. That's God's great trash heap. Now you're not going to be there because you're productive. You stay in line with him. When I say you're productive, you love God. And you worship with all your heart, your soul, and all your mind. And you love people. And you make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. And that's really the heart of your life. Yeah, you do everything else. You know, hospital, instructional designer, working with people in group homes and making sure they're they're okay. You're uh, taking care of your children, your teacher. You have your other issues. That's nice. Those are outgrowths of your faith in God. Those are all that are. But your main thing is your love and your faith for God. And you're living a light every day. That's all I got to say today. I hope that was helpful to somebody. Let me see if I can extend an open invitation for those who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Just say, oh God. Oh God. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. 
I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Of all of my sins. I believe. I believe that Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ died. Died. And that you raised him to life. That you raised him to life. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And I receive your son. And I receive your son as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We really appreciate um, that encouraging word, Pastor Tim. And we just want to pray a prayer over all of our church family that God will bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you. May he anoint your steps with peace. And we are confident that God will deliver um, all the prayer requests that have been prayed. And we thank God in advance that we'll be a light to him to win others uh, through Christ in our daily livings. Amen. Amen. And God bless.